Hey, I'm Janice Campbell. I've never made a video before, but I'm going to try to walk you through the Excellence in Literature books. As you see, there are five books in the series. Introduction to Literature, Literature and Composition, American Literature, British Literature, and World Literature. We are going to look at what they contain. So, for a first look, sorry about the shakiness, um, you're going to see the table of contents. We include a number of helps at the beginning of the book, telling the student how to get started, ask, answering some frequently asked questions, and then we instruct them on some interesting things like how to read a book and so forth. We'll talk about that in detail as we flip through the book. Then there are the modules, the book modules that you see. Every book is listed. There's nine major works that they will study during the year, and they have the option of studying an additional work in each unit or module for an honors grade. Then there is additional helpful information at the back, which we will look through as we flip through. Okay, let's start flipping. First chapter we'll just take a quick look at is the How to Read a Book chapter. As you see, um, I explain what, how to read challenging literature, how to read fiction and poetry, comedy, tragedy, challenging and facing challenging ideas, how to annotate books as students read, because I believe annotation is one of the key tools that you use in order to understand great literature. You have to ask questions, you have to be actively engaged. So. A lot of fun to do this. So I give them instructions, but I try to make the instructions brief. I don't want to talk them to death. I had four boys that I homeschooled, and I know good and well attention spans are fairly limited for something that they're not sure they're going to be interested in. I give them an entire list of questions they can consider while they read, but these are not comprehension questions that you need to ask them. These are just some questions that you need to refer to every once in a while just to understand how to look at a book. The next chapter is discerning worldview through literary periods. One of the things I discovered about literary periods is their clues to the worldview of the author. They're also clues to the style and so forth. So we deal with six major literary periods in this book, or we define six major literary periods in this book and refer to others. Um, so you'll see basic information, and again, the information is short, manageable, and accessible. The next thing we're going to take a look at is one of the modules. This is Module 5. The book that is going to be studied, the focus text, is Till We Have Faces by C.S. Lewis. The books that we study, we study full-length classics in virtually every module. There's a few that are an exception for reasons that are explained in the text. The honors text is referenced just below the focus text, and in this case I have suggested optional reading for parents if you just want to read another book that might help you discuss the book with your students. However, the entire curriculum is intended to be self-directed because I am well aware that many students look at the study, or many parents look at the study of classic literature in the same way that I look at the study of calculus. I have no idea where to begin with calculus, and I know that many parents are the same with classic literature, so I try to be the teacher for you. So we begin with giving the unit focus, which tells the students what they're going to learn. The literary context is the literary period we talked about, and they can go back to the front of the book and just kind of overview what that is. Then I offer them three things. I offer them an introduction, something to think about, and something to notice, because as they're reading through the book, you can't think through all those questions that I suggested but you can think through three specific things that are very important for this particular work. So, gave him a little direction. Next is context resources. I believe that context, the history of the time, the art, music, and other literature of the time will help your students understand what the book is about, what the author is trying to say, and how the author, the style the author used, why he used that particular style. And so I offer 
Many of these things are links. There's a few library resources that are absolutely optional. I know that local libraries don't always have everything. So they're categorized by author's life, some general readings. There's poetry. There's audio resources. Include, I usually link to the audio version of the book if there is one. There's video resources visual arts. For this particular module there is not a lot of visual arts because there simply was not anything suitable because the book Till We Have Faces is based upon a classic myth and the paintings that had been created for that particular myth were not suitable. So I try to be very careful in what I refer your students to. Um, classical music or whatever kind of music is appropriate because when you are considering a work, if you can look at art from the period, if you can hear music from the period, it will help you understand so much more of what you're reading. I will put in optional places to visit. Our users of this curriculum live all over the world, and so you'll find lovely resources for places to visit sometimes. Not every unit will have that, but many do. There is, in this particular book, an interesting fact section. And then we get to the assignment schedule. The four-week assignment schedule appears at the end of every single unit. During the first week, I tell them where to begin reading. They begin reading with context resources or focus text, and I will tell them where. Sometimes it's important to read one or the other first. Sometimes they read them, begin reading them both simultaneously. And at the front of the book, I talk a little bit more about learning to plan your time because as I am teaching this course through the books, I am also trying to train students to think and work like college students. So I give them schedule week by week and then in the front of the book suggest ways for them to, you know, allocate their time and plan. In week two, they do another short assignment as they're continuing to read. And sometimes there's a choice of assignments, sometimes there's not. In this particular unit, the two assignments, assignment options are as follows. The first one is to retell the Cupid and Psyche myth as a story that takes place in a modern setting. So that's a more creative assignment. The second option is to write a brief summary of the original Cupid and Psyche myth and briefly compare the original myth with Lewis's retelling. This should be no more than one page long. And I believe, like Charlotte Mason, that short lessons are usually better. You, when you require an overly long piece of writing from a student who does not have a lot to say, you will end up with a lot of filler and fluff. And I would rather see deep thought distilled into shorter space. Okay, week three, they begin drafting their essay. I tell them how many words. 550 words for this paper is about one page typed, double-spaced, both sides. So a single page, one side is 250 words approximately. And I explain all that in the front of the book, how to, how to proceed with that. And then I have a detailed college-style essay prompt, which they write on. At the end of this week, they turn it in to the parent or other writing mentor, whoever whoever's going to evaluate. And you will evaluate for context and ideas. And we have a rubric in the back of the book, which we'll look at in just a minute, so that you can see it. Week four, you give it back to them. They edit it into a final draft. And there you have a good essay. And you'll notice that the whole process from the writing process from thinking to organization of ideas to um, word choice and so forth and then writing and revision is all included. So the next thing we look at is the honors option and there's one chapter in back that just tells how to do the honors option, tells how to do the extra readings and when, which you have a lot of choices with that. You can even save them for summer reading if you like. Um, one approach paper for each book, and that's it. And then at the end of the year, a research paper. And there are instructions for that, but they're small instructions because I expect every student to own a writer's handbook. 
very useful thing to own. And every professional writer has a whole shelf of writer's handbooks to refer to so that they can get things correct. Um, there's suggestions for the author research paper topics and then the CLEP test so that they can possibly earn college credit for this subject. The One of the most interesting chapters is my formats and models chapter in which there are instructions for each type of paper. You see that. And, and then there is a student written model. So they will be able to see what the paper actually looks like and how to do it. Toward the end of that chapter you'll find an, um, an essay on how to make your essay look good. This was written by one of my college professors as a model for his classes and I got his permission to reprint it here because I found it so helpful. As I was in his class, he in the course of this essay explains exactly what to do and why to create a properly formatted MLA format essay. Next chapter is Tips for Evaluating Writing. That's just two short pages. And then you come to the rubric. And as you can see, it is one page long. There are categories with very specific things to check for context, organization or content and organization, style of the voice, mechanics, sentence fluency, word choice, and so forth. And that will help you evaluate your student in, as a, in a way that's consistent and constructive. There is an evaluation summary where you record the scores and that will go into their file at the end of the year. I have actually had a few students take this on to their college um, English department and get advanced placement based upon what they had covered. And I think that might be unusual, but it's worth a try if you do the American and British literature levels especially, which are classes that are very often required. There's an assignment checklist just to help you out as students work through the assignments. There's a glossary. And finally, at the very end of some of the editions, this is my second edition of this book, and I did not think of including this chart of literary periods. So it's just the same information that is recorded in the chapter at the front in a slightly different format. So you can find that on the Excellence in Literature website under Teacher Resources. That's excellence-in-literature.com and just look under Teacher Resources where a lot of the context resources for this are focused. That is Excellence in Literature. And I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Let me just show you one more thing. Here's Excellence in Literature Handbook for Writers that we offer. The first half of that explains how to write an essay, construct an argument, and so forth. Second half is a style guide. And the time frame timeline is another resource we have that is simply a blank timeline that will help you construct a timeline that is will organize the information you study with your students. So all of those things are available from everydayeducation.com. That's everydayeducation.com. I'm Janice Campbell. Thank you for joining me and hope you enjoyed the tour.